welcome to Let's Go Free Radio again. <laughs> it's the only place you're going to find a show that shows you how to get free money and help to do the things you really want to do in life or solve those pesky problems you have. We got four great offers today. You know, actually, we're gonna, I'm going to show you about uh, where you could spend just $10,000. I'm not, I'm not $10,000, just $10. 10 bucks and be the official general manager of a baseball team so you can call the shots and tell them how to run this team. Wow! <laughs> okay, also I'm going to show you how to be a superhero in life and, and raise like $100,000 of free money for a loved one who really needs it. Helping somebody else, that's how to be a superhero. Yeah. Or here, how to have an 80% success rate and getting like $25,000 for your band or if you're a singer or anything. 80,000, I mean 80% 80 success rate. You can't get that anywhere else. Okay. And then also, I'm gonna show you how to go to one website and you could fail at getting like $20,000 for your idea. So a website gives out free money for your ideas. So you fail at, but you wind up getting $400,000. Man, so watch these stories, you're gonna love it. This next interview is important. I, I really believe so. I mean, I want you to meet this fellow named Eric Kleckner. Now, he's really just a student almost, just a year out of college. You know, and he spent his whole time, went to school upstate New York, spending his time doodling in English class all the time. Him and his buddy never paying attention. And what they didn't realize, those doodles that they're playing around and not paying attention in English class, wound up getting him a, almost a half a million dollars, $400,000, just a year out of school. <laughs> and what's also important about their story is how they got excited about their doodles and they were going to make a monster kids game or something like that. And they were going to go on crowdfunding. So they went on a crowdfunding site, Kickstarter, one of the biggest ones, and they failed. They failed on their site. They were looking for like $20,000. They didn't even get $3,000. So if you don't get the whole 20, you don't get anything on these sites. So, but what happened was, even though they failed, some investor in Germany was fishing around, you know, Kickstarter, because they're always looking for ideas. And they wrote him, he wrote him a letter at Christmas time, signing it Father Christmas, and offering him hundreds of thousands of dollars for their idea because they thought it was great. See, and that's what's so important about getting out there and failing. You have no idea where stuff comes from. <laughs> so don't try to second guess. Just get out there and do something. Now watch how Eric did it. Well, Eric Kleckner, <laughs> he's, barely, he's still barely a student, it seems. And I'm just wondering, you know, all this money you've made on making games, you know, computer games, what do you tell your parents now that all that time you were screwing around in classrooms, really working on computer games instead of studying, <laughs> that, that it really paid off? I know. Well, to be honest, it's still taking some convincing, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, you go to school, you, you think when you graduate, you're going to be applying for jobs, but instead we were applying for crowdfunding, you know, so <laughs> just totally different. Well, that's amazing, but, but it's true, like my parents, you know, I, I act like a crazy person on television, and they didn't want to admit they knew me. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's great. <laughs> they wanted me to be very sophisticated, and they, I wouldn't sell any books, you know. So you knew in your heart that games were it, and, and what they were talking in, uh, you know, English class <laughs> ain't gonna make you money. <laughs> yeah, no. It's just, yeah, you know, it ends up being completely different experience from what I anticipated. You know, we, you, you take a lot of things you learn from college and you expect to apply them in one way, and then yeah. all of a sudden, you, a year out of school, you're making computer games and monsters come to life, and some of the stuff <laughs> you learned is actually paying off too. So it's. It's been and a while. Right, it's like I have a million dollars already, and you're barely a year out of college, right? Yeah. <laughs> but That's more true. importantly, you know, to me, with you know, telling your story with is that you went on 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 uh, Kickstarter like two years ago or so when it just started, and you failed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, it was really it was such an early stage for Kickstarter where we had to well first first people we reached out to were family and friends knowing, all right, we can probably get some funding out of them. But 
they had no idea what Kickstarter was or how it works. So we had to actually log on to computers for them, get them to the website, and just set it all up. All right, just click the enter button, and you'll you'll be really helping us out. Credit card number right here. Yeah, exactly. So it was a struggle, definitely getting uh, up and running on Kickstarter. And plus, you know, it, it was way before games were really uh, in the spotlight on that platform too. But you said you tried to raise. What was the figure you had in mind? Like forty. So yeah, we we were we were raising twenty thousand dollars. That's right. that was the idea. We thought that would be enough to get us up and running with the website. And um, we also had seen some of the early pro, uh, Kickstarter projects have success, and it just looked like a magical platform where right. you just oh yeah, right you see all the then, good parts. You know, <laughs> a month later, you've got like fifty, a hundred thousand dollars from yeah. contributors. <laughs> And that we're just lining up at you know at the door to, to drop money in your in your project's bank account. But it turns out it didn't work like that. Um, you know, I, I think we we didn't have very good pro, uh, rewards for the money. Um, we didn't do a very good job promoting it either. So we raised about three thirty five hundred, I think, out of that twenty. So it was a pretty big failure, I would say. Yeah, but I mean, thirty five hundred bucks. Where else would you've gotten even thirty five hundred bucks? <laughs> uh, well, the thing about Kickstarter though is. You don't get your funding yeah. unless you reach the entire thing. Exactly. So we didn't get any of it. Right. But still, I think there there was some demand. You know that would, what it would say. But you say yeah. so you didn't get your twenty. You only got thirty five. But what did Kickstarter bring instead? Yeah. Well, the the brilliant thing about Kickstarter at the time was uh, not only were our parents trolling Kickstarter to help us try and give us you know twenty <laughs> bucks. There's also some angel and VC investors. Uh, who were also looking for their next investment. And it was, it was actually a great story. Uh, Christmas Eve, we got an email. Um, it was from a, a VC in Germany wow. who said, yeah, I found you guys on Kickstarter. I think this looks amazing. Uh, I showed it to my kids and they're all excited about it. So they, <laughs> you got to sure nice kids. Up. Yeah, that's the best part. Is as long as you get the kids hooked, then yeah. it's in. Uh, so yeah, that was perfect target audience for us anyways. So yeah, Christmas Eve, we get an email saying, you know, I love this idea. I'd love to learn more about you guys and, and find out how we can make investment. And he signed it Father Christmas. And we had, we had no idea if it was spam or junk. We did you know, we thought this could be some kind of virus. What's your buddies from the frat house? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No idea. So we, we responded uh, hesitantly yeah. and he was just like, no, you know, I'm just, that's my sense of humor. I thought it'd be great, you know, introduction <laughs> for myself. So actually a few months later, uh, we closed a, a deal for $200,000. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, 10 times what we were originally seeking on Kickstarter, um, it ended up being a, a true blessing in disguise there. Did you call your English teacher and say, tell me, I, I told you I didn't have it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> And you said that English was going to get me a job. <laughs> Doing doodles in your class got me the Yeah, job. exactly. With little did we know, we were working on uh, securing some funding, drawing in our notebooks that entire time. <laughs> it's funny, too, actually. That was uh, the whole, um, you know. The premise of your. That, that was the premise, the inspiration. Uh, myself and my, my good friend, Dave Chanel, we had a lot of classes together and, you know, you sit through these hour long PowerPoint oh. presentations and by the end of it, our notebooks are just covered in all these different doodles and monsters. And we're arguing at one point, you know, I wonder who's, who's monster will win a fight, this dragon thing that you have on your paper, or like this ninja character I've got on mine. And we thought that would be a fun idea for a website. So that's it actually got started in the, in the classroom. Yeah. Wow. So English class was important. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's what's so great about America to me. I mean, you can still do stuff like this. And like, two kids, you're barely out of college, don't even know. And, and so now through that, through failing on Kickstarter, you raised, you know, almost a half a million dollars already. And, and now, and you also just did another one on the app story, you know, dot com, which you're developing now. So to know about, and that's your gaff fighters, uh, right? Yeah, yep, yeah, graph fighters. Graph fighters. Yeah. And, that, and so graphfighters.com is where to keep track of what you're doing and when that will be out. And that's going to be a free app, right? Yeah, exactly. So we don't have a release date yet. Um, we still have a few months of development left. But based on all the feedback we got from the web version that yeah. the original funding went towards, 
Uh, we've got people lined up that are really excited. Also, the feedback you got from the fat cats kids are the best feedback. <laughs> yeah, well, that, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. You're right. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's a charming thing. I mean, you you draw your own characters, right? Yeah. To fight the other characters. And, and, yeah. Uh, I mean, that, that's you know this participation and, and your own and you know creativity and everything. So, well, yeah, can't get better than that instead of Disney telling you what's important. <laughs> well, that's true. Well, you know, that was kind of the idea behind it too. Is all these games you're sort of stuck with the characters yeah. that they give you. Yeah. Um, but some of the most fun memories I have is just being a kid and just you know the best thing you could ever get was a pack of crayons and some some paper and you just scribble away for hours so right. it's about you know <laughs> we just wanted to bring those drawings to life and and figure out all kinds of different ways you could play with them well also isn't it true i mean like kids i mean you open up the pots and pans and they have more fun with that than <laughs> yeah exactly it's like a symphony you know you got a 30-piece orchestra right in your right. cabinet <laughs> instead of spending three thousand dollars at the music store for this stuff they'll use once <laughs> Oh, <laughs> well, that's terrific! Now, how you know? So you have a partner in this, right? Two you two guys. You were two guys screwing off in class all the time, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> partner in crime. And your parents still don't believe you have a real job, right? Yeah. Well, you know, it's tough because they don't see anyone else's name on the on the paychecks coming in. They're just like, what? you know, I don't, I don't understand. The internet gave you money. How does this work? <laughs> I understand. I went through the same process. You know, they didn't understand. Why do you have to act so crazy on television? Right. Yeah. And they didn't even admit I was their son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I was a Larry King all the time and everything. Hey, is that your boy, Larry King? Oh, they sort of <laughs> a little embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, parents, and, and even now myself as a parent, right? You have this perception of what your, your child should be. <laughs> Most of it is what you never were. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> or you aspired to be and, and didn't do that, so you want your kid to do. And it's a whole new world. So that's what you're doing is going out, I think, with an open heart and open mind because you have no success behind you to tell you that there's some other way this should be done. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, it's the first venture out of college, so we really are learning. But you don't know any different. You go, hey, this makes sense because that's all you see. <laughs> <laughs> and you do it. God damn, it worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not the way you think it worked, but it worked. <laughs> yeah, well, we learned that early on with the Kickstarter when, you know, we put it up and, and at the end we had a huge giant, you know, failure. And then you just stick at it a couple months later, it worked out better than you ever expected. And that's why I'm, I'm trying to do through these interviews and whatever is get people to do that. Because if you're not encouraged to do something, even to fail, you'll never find out what you should have done initially. You didn't have enough moxie or talent or, or, or connections to find some fat cat is going to throw you two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. So that would have never happened unless you're busting your ass doing something that doesn't work. Yeah. And, and I think that's what life, even businesses I start, the first idea usually doesn't work, but it leads me to an idea I should have thought but wasn't smart enough. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's right. I mean, you're an artist, a drawer. I mean, you have an idea for a character, right? And so you start, and that changes as soon as you start drawing it because you see something and that leads you to something else you never thought about. And I assume I'm not an artist. Yeah, no, no, you're right. Um, it's just, you, you start in one direction, and yeah. next thing you know, it looks completely different than, than where you thought so you were going. All of life to me is art. See, like you drawing characters or you starting a business because you just have an idea and you start that idea, then it develops in something else, you know? And, and, and that's the real winner idea, but you can't think of it first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're right. You know, and it, I, what we've seen so far too, and you know, I think it's obvious the, the more you go through the process, you understand, but whatever you think your idea is the, and yeah. the way to go about it, you know, at the end of the day, you're not the one paying yeah. for the game <laughs> and giving first, yourself the funding. It really comes down to, you know, the target market, the yeah. investors, everyone else that, you know, yeah. it makes it what it is. Well, to me, what, what it also I equated to after years of failure and stuff like that is like a, a love relationship too. I mean, it, it's a give and take. I mean, it, you have to understand what you're there to help someone else. Yeah. So you have to understand their needs, not just your needs. <laughs> You're here to help somebody else. Like loving is helping somebody else do something, not just you, but that's the pleasure. So in your work, it, it's really trying to understand the, the market and, 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 and satisfy them. And you don't know because you only have your life. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. You're absolutely right. You have no idea 
what, yeah. what's going through the, the minds of the people on the other end. So, so if you were a, a young graduate getting out of school now, or what kind of advice you could give them? <laughs> you know, I, I would say just start building, you know, just, yeah. just, whatever it is, whether it's a product, uh, a service-based company, an app or a website, I think the best thing you can just do is just start at, like right now. You know, there's, it's easier than ever to get funding for your project. You know, whether you need the funding or not is, is one case. You could, you know, start and make money from day one. Right. Um, but yeah, it, what, I've, what I've seen is things are just so much easier to start now than, than they were five or 10 years ago. So, you know, just, just get started. You got nothing to lose. And, and in our case, Sometimes when you do lose, that's when, you know, the best moment is right around the corner. I, no, I, I, I think failure is the best thing that ever happened to me. That's the only place in time you learn. I've written 100 books. Only 10 have done anything. I'm wrong 90% of the time. So I just plan for failure. It's a you lot know, easier. That's probably a good success rate, you know, in the scheme of things. One out of how, many, how many games start and never, you know. Oh, thousands, you know. Exactly. So it's the right. same thing. So if you're not... You know, you know, if you plan for that, so what are you going to do when that doesn't happen instead of, oh, you know, setting up your business. So, oh, okay, I, for my first million, I'm going to do this. My second million, I, you know, they're the kind of advice you get from people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and that's a nice problem to have. <laughs> what yeah, and, you know, it's, a, it's, another, it's one thing to plan for things, but it's another thing to actually, you know, sit out and start working on them. Yeah. And, and just like you said about the drawing, you know, where you're starting is most likely not where you're going to finish anyway. You know, easy route. You don't, you don't know where it's going to where it's going to take you. And, and that's all of life. You got to take that first step. But trying to write a five year plan, man, or something like that's what everybody. <laughs> you know what? It probably takes a month or two to write a five year plan when you, you could be two months into development if you just started building right exactly. away. Exactly. It's stupid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because yeah, it just whatever you need to get the first step done and then decide after that, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Well, you're a delight. I hope Dave's as, as uh, whimsical as you are to so keep you in the game business and don't let oh, these yeah. big fat cats get you, you know, into big bureaucracy or something. They'll, you lose this enthusiasm, which makes your game fun, you know, and it, because it shows what's inside you, you know, and, and that's the key. I think that's why, you know, your heart is really smarter than your brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, your heart doesn't overthink things. I don't know. If exactly. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but now you've gone to Syracuse University, so you're a smart person, so you got to use that brain all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to get you in trouble at times. Hey, you, you don't dismiss it, but, well, you're, you're nice. So you go to uh, gaffighters.com to keep track of when that app is coming out, because you want to be the first on your block, because it's free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what? Uh, Definitely, yeah, graphfighters.com. Follow us uh, on Twitter or Facebook. We're posting updates all the time. So lots of good videos we come out with, uh, just showing the development, where it's at, you know, what's what's coming up next. Um, but, you know, we're really excited. We I know we've got a whole bunch of four- and five-year-olds that you can't wait for this app to come out. It's my favorite <laughs> part about it. Too. It's a it, way to develop kids. your kids' you know, creativity. Yeah, it's kids, it's parents, it's professional artists all playing together in the same place. It's so much fun to see that. Teachers, happen. art teachers, everybody's got to do this, yeah. Well, good for you guys. We have to, We need help with the education system, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's coming from two guys who hate school. Yeah. <laughs> Draw in school more. That's all I can say, I guess. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you. I really appreciate the time. Wow. Ah? Uh? <laughs> See, we all should learn from Eric. He's a young man, but we all have a lot of learning to do again from young people who go out there and do something because they have nothing to lose. Listen to what he said. You know, remember what he said? He said, uh, he said, just start building something, a business, a service, or app. Just start. He said, don't even write a business plan because it's going to take you three months to write a good plan and you lose three months in developing something because you don't know what it's going to turn out to be unless you start. And how he says that, look at it. He said, you could start making money in almost any kind of business from day one and you don't even need money, you know, with crowdfunding and things like that. So, uh, and he really is trying to drive home. He says, it's easier now than ever before to start a business. Now let's, I think we have to all start learning <laughs> from a 22 year old on what this world has really come to. One must try.
If you like sports, you're gonna love this next interview. <laughs> I'm not a big sports fan, but I have a boy who is, and he's into this fantasy leagues, and he travels you know, to other states to meet his buddies and go through the fantasy league. He spends most of his Saturdays or Sundays or whatever, you know, uh, talking with his buddies about you know this competition they have. Well. This is a fella I interviewed, you're gonna see in a second, Grant Cohen, who starts something called Fro uh, ProjectFranchise.org. <laughs> and this is where now you as a sports fan for $10 could actually be the general manager of a real team. He's buying a real team for all you sports nuts. <laughs> And also gonna cost you like 10 bucks to be the general manager and you get a vote and everything. It's really cool, so watch this. Grant Cohen, and you got this project franchise.org. It's just the neatest thing I've ever seen. You could make me a baseball manager for 10 bucks that'll be making decisions. <laughs> I'm yeah, going to run a baseball team. G general manager, I don't think we're going to put you in the pinstripes and stirrups. I work. see. Yeah. Well, I would wear pinstripes. Would you be his boss? <laughs> to be his boss. You're living the dream, yeah. That's yeah pro so how does this work? Yeah. What happened? Sure, yeah. So Project Franchise is a, a fun concept that uh, some buddies and I came up with literally sitting at a, a bar, sports oh, bar. Naturally. Thinking about you know, our, <laughs> our teams and the managers and the moves they've made and thinking that we could do better. And, uh, and one of us said, well, what, what if we could? And, and actually led to you know, a bit of research and discussion. And so the idea is, I think, fairly feasible um, behind Project Franchise, which is to actually acquire a minor league baseball team. Uh, they're, they're, that's sort of the minor league sport that is, you know, obviously most right. popular for us and has the most amount of teams, independent leagues, um, and is affordable, and uh, and build a sizable online fan base that can either live in that market or really live anywhere globally, uh, where they have a, a say and a vote uh, for an a cheap annual subscription. You buy yourself a vote in every decision we make, and that can be yeah. from. Who, and so who, you're going to do this on the internet, so it's not cost you any money to to, to do this whole thing. No, no, no. To to get to build a fan base and, and get started and operational, that our, our cost is very, very little. Uh, now, buying the team does cost a little bit yeah, of money, well, but you're going to get money from the fan base to do that, right? Once you have the fans and you get some sponsors, then you can buy yourself a team. And then uh, you get a loan, a government loan, to help you buy the franchise, right? <laughs> yeah, well, a lot, well, a lot of local cities, municipalities would love yeah. to be able to have you know a, a minor league team and will help with the funding, especially if they have stadiums, et cetera. Particularly one that's coming in with a built-in fan base. Ah, uh -huh. so in other words, you're going to go on the web and people could join up, be part of your fan base, and be part of the. You say the general manager, is that what it is? I don't know the job. Yeah, the, the, in sports, you call it the general manager, sort of the key guy between okay. the you know, So and, I'm going to help make decisions about you know, how the baseball park is run and what color uniforms and all this kind of stuff. Ex exactly. So I think you know the obvious stuff is is the – You, you know, my who's, kind of beer. Huh? <laughs> who's, yeah, who's playing first and you know who's hitting cleanup. Um, but for us, I think the fun stuff is, is everything in addition to that. So as you say, the team logo and the colors – where the team is, what kind of concessions are in the stadium, what kind of beers on tap if we've got, you know, uh, hot dogs or sausages. Let, really let everyone decide. What it's not. Or tofu, right? Yeah. I, something tells me our fans are not going to choose tofu. Right. We'll see. We'll see. You'll see. It's a democracy there. You never know, right? Yeah. I, well, and the, the, the only unfortunate part here is for those of us who are the founders, is that we are going to have to move and live wherever this is. So ah. <laughs> no, no offense to certain markets in this country, but I live in, in a very lovely town in Los Angeles right now. It's, I see. You may be in Hartford in the year. Huh? It's 75 and sunny, and yeah, I, I, I could be living in northern Idaho pretty soon here. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, uh, as a general manager, I could be anywhere. I could be in Barcelona. <laughs> that, that's the cool part, is that our fans don't have to be there. Uh, it extends what's usually a very localized yeah. thing, which is sports fandom, to a, a national or, frankly, global market. So I could watch the game on, on live on, on my screen, on my computer, and, and vote about what you know, the management should be doing and whatever. And, and, and yeah, as, as interactive as technology will yeah. allow us uh, is, is our plan. <laughs> will there be an iPhone app too? You've been in the iPhone uh, business. Yeah, yeah, certainly. I, I come from the mobile universe and I really have big, grandiose visions of long-term having an app. <laughs> literally, literally being able to sit in the stadium watching a game and voting on, you know, whether it should be a, a fastball or a curveball for the next <laughs> Checking his app and he gets the score and he's calling in the signals. Well, now, wait a minute. How about the opposing manager? Could they see that? 
Oh, as long no, as long as, long as it's as long as it's only viewable by the uh, the, the results <laughs> only viewable the by the owner, so called, right? And and so as cheap as ten bucks, you can get in on this, right? Right? Yeah, ten dollar annual subscription buys you one vote. Yeah. Uh, we do have packages where you can increase your voting. Uh, plus, you get other sort of bonuses and goodies, like you know, team apparel once it comes out, and <laughs> games and. Get a sit in the owner's box, if you will. Oh wow! <laughs> really mean take my girlfriends and my wife because <laughs> I'm going yeah. into the uh, uh, project, and that's projectfranchise.org, right? Yeah, project yeah. projectfranchise.org. We, we also own the .com, but uh, uh, we like ourselves more of a community-driven. Uh, right. uh, so it's a community. Well, that that's a nice front. So it, you were just a bunch of guys at a bar saying, "Hey, you know, want to be involved in sports more?" And I instead of yeah, we want my voice heard about the management part, and this is the way to do it, huh? Yeah, sort of. I mean, the the the, the good news was that that we each sort of filled a particular skill set that was useful for this business. Uh -huh. I come sort of a digital advertising management uh -huh. role. One of our friends is is a developer, so he's able to actually build. So we have built uh -huh. out a pretty solid website. The other is a, a lawyer, so he can help with filing the corporate nice. documents and paperwork and stuff like that. That that needs to happen. So, uh, and then the other was sort of from the finance world. So it was really a, a nice, healthy mix of, of folks. Well, who, actually, maybe if other people now go to a bar tonight, find two other friends and, and yeah. build a competing <laughs> site so they could play against you guys. <laughs> and yeah, we, we, we totally welcome it. I think the idea that long term it could be a league of, right. of lots of franchises run by fan involvement would be great. Right, fan involvement and, and you have real players playing real games so you don't have to play these fantasy games on, on Facebook, whatever the heck it is. And you have real people doing real things, and you're involved in management, and you're part of the yeah <laughs> the sports world. Yeah, we 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 say our tagline is making fantasy a reality, and it's a, a ah, nod. Ah, yeah. Right, exactly. No fantasy more fantasy games. Huge, wildly popular. I'm you know you it's, you Sundays when I'm not watching the 49ers, which are my team, and I, I care about. I'm still spending all day on the couch or in front of my phone. Checking my fantasy team scores. That's insane. Right? That me and me and my buddies on all different parts of the country are playing each other in something that we have. I mean, other than just wild guesses, we have no control over. It's it's right. teams and players that we don't even really normally care about. Uh, and it's yeah, there's a cash prize at the end, but we're really doing it for pride. Yeah, absolutely. So, we, so we you like, could do it for real stuff. And get yeah, exactly. into this fantasy Wonderful. thing and, and whatever. So it's great. It's great to have you, Grant. And thanks for having the brain, the brains to do this thing, the gumption and the enthusiasm. And and you didn't even need money, so that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to use a little bit of money, but it's not. It's yeah, not as, but I mean, you don't have to raise a million bucks to do most. something. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And thank yeah. you. It's a lot of fun, and we appreciate uh, uh, you know anyone who can help spread the word. You know, like us on uh, Facebook, follow us on Twitter, all that good stuff. Projectfranchise.org, right? That's that's the website, and that's uh, at pftwit and facebook.com uh, slash Project Franchise. Project Franchise. Thank you so much, Grant. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. I'll be it. playing against you soon. I have a good one. Right. So for 10 bucks, you'll even be able to sit in the owner's box. <laughs> See what you could do with money for free money on the web. Man, this is what this... You know, technology is all about doing stuff you really want to do in life and not having any money to do it. One must try. Now here's a free website that can make you a ton of money <laughs> and they don't charge you anything. Actually what it is, it's really aimed at musicians and other kind of artists like that. And what they do is become your like social media platform. They help you raise money, communicate with your fans, and it's also great for fans who are looking for new music to get involved in or understand or just enjoy or whatever. It's a great little platform. It's run by Benji Rogers and it's called Pledge Music. Music. Yeah, and, and what's cool is that they, they teach you and they don't charge you anything for all this because they're making a small percentage on the money you raise. That's, that's how they make the money. So the more money they help you raise, the more money they make. So it's not like these other websites that make you read 500 blog pages you know, to figure out how to raise money on their sites. Their experts actually help you through the process. You know? And so you have people there helping you raise money and teaching you how to communicate with people and what they expect and all. all how do you 
through social media. I mean, people are charging him millions of dollars, well, not millions, but tens and thousands of dollars. You know, courses for social media, they do it for free. And they're experts on this, particularly for artists. And what's neat too, you choose a charity that you're interested in and a portion of all the funds you raise goes to that charity. Now we all have some charity that we're interested in. So watch Benji explain this to you. Benji Rogers, man. Like you're the grandfather of crowdfunding, aren't you? <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't sound that old, but yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, four and a half years of this business, man. That's an old timer. That's a that's yeah. Great. So now you crowdfunding special... slash director fan. That's what I'll say. I'm the grandfather of crowdfunding slash director fan. Uh, director fan. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, but you know, it, it's still four and a half years. I don't think the big ones are around barely that long. Yeah. You know, and so you've been there. But uh, the niche to me is, seems so important. I mean, music is so important in everyone's lives. Uh, there's nothing that soothes the soul more than than music. It seems. Yeah. You know, everybody wants maybe. Uh, uh, chocolate ice cream, but music is better for you. <laughs> That's true. Chocolate ice cream doesn't sound as good. Right. <laughs> right. And, and, but the genius you have of this site is how a band now could really not only get money, but keep his fan base forever, have a social media concept to their website, and you're giving it all away free to them. Absolutely. You know, the most important thing for us was, was, was that what we do is quite difficult. And normally there would be big setup fees and all that kind of stuff to get all this stuff done. Whereas what we've done is build a team that can do this for the artists. And then basically, you know, they can run these magnificent director fan campaigns that raise money, involve the fans from day one. And at the end of it, give a part of the profits to a charity of the artist's choice. Now, is so charity optional? It is. Oh, okay. It is. It's optional. <laughs> but the majority of do it. And the reason for that is, is that... Um, uh, as an artist, you get asked the same questions by interviewers thousands of times, and this is one other angle on it. Uh -huh. And what we found was every artist had a cause that was really important to them, whether it was breast cancer, whether it was HIV research, whether it was homelessness or human trafficking. And so um, by combining all these elements, mm. it became clear that you're, the, it's one more dimension to the artist other than just buy my music. I see. It was be a part of it. At the end, someone else wins, and everybody in that I circle. See. So they could pretend they're Angela Jolie and helping the world. <laughs> they could actually be Angela Jolie and helping the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's, oh, I see, yeah. So it's really important, actually, for... Uh, if you think of it this way, too, the music industry had a huge problem with piracy for a long, long uh -huh. time, people stealing music. Now, it's very hard for someone to sign up put their credit card details in and pre-order an album from an artist directly with a part going to a charity and still steal the music. I see. It's a cold-hearted oh. person to do that. You're like an old Jewish mother. You're going to guilt them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, my old Jewish mother would be very proud of me. <laughs> well, that, that's terrific. But it... it, it I mean, versus all the other crowdfunding sites, you know, that even use magicians, because a lot of them started with, you know, the arts, uh, that you are really, it seems like the only place out there where you become part of the artist you, that could have it forever. I mean, it's part of their website forever. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole thing is, is that it's a way of always communicating with the fans what you're doing, not just what you're selling, but what you're right. doing. And by allowing them the, the, this access point, this way to be involved, that's an ongoing relationship. We've got artists who do two and three, sometimes four campaigns with us, and wow. we, it grows and grows and yeah. grows each time. And one of the things that, that happens on traditional crowdfunding is, is how many times can you go back to the well to yes, ask for right. money? What I say is don't create a well. Create an experience that's so good that all you do is make the next experience better and the next experience better. If you can make a better album, you can make a better experience. Yes, I see. Wonderful. But it, 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 it becomes, I mean, social media is so important for someone who's not actively involved in it like you. I mean, everything in the world seems, oh, you got to have social media. So if you're out there starting a band or have a band and trying to get more, I mean, you provide a social media platform for them. Correct. Yeah. And the most important thing with social media is, is again, it's it sounds like it's very big and hard and to, to do, but really what it is is it's just about involving people in actions that they can do today. Yeah. There's nothing worse than sending out a tweet or, or a Facebook post that says, 
we're in the studio making a new album. And <laughs> right, exactly. The silence is what am I supposed to do? And what's funny is, is a manager said to me, you know, I saw this tweet from an artist, and he said, you know, it's happening. We're in the studio, day one. So I got my credit card, and I said, I saw your tweet. Here's my credit card. Where do I pay? <laughs> he goes, but the album's not finished yet. We're in the studio. And I said, understood. Here's my credit card. I want it now. Yeah. Well, social media means I want to spend money. Let me please. What's and the it? answer was not till September. It's January. <laughs> Madness, you know. And, and, I'm you know, going to use you if I'm not a musician, can I? <laughs> I mean, because look, I, if I want to have that social media relationship with a fan base and try to create a fan base, you know, like Seth Golden, you know, talks yeah. about the following and all that kind of stuff. So to create that kind of fan base, that's what your platform does. And I won't have to hire some <laughs> IT most, guy who's going to charge me a hundred grand to do that. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, the most important thing about social media is it's things to do. Yeah. And what you do is you ask questions. Hey, here's here's three different versions of the song. Which ones do you guys like? Ah, the I see. Here's three different versions of the poster. Which one? You know, some of our most successful artists have given like an entire album to the fans and said, "Which song do you think I should guess. be the single? Uh, why, why are we relying on on a record company or someone? You guys are the fans. Tell us yeah, what to do." Exactly. No. That's and, to me what's great about uh, crowdfunding is that you don't have a middleman telling you what sells. <laughs> that too, yeah. <laughs> and and then, then getting the money to produce it and then going out and say, hey, nobody wants this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you go right to the source of the fan. Well, that's yeah. really, well. you gave me a great figure or two great figures before the, uh, before the interview saying that you have an 80% success rate. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, and 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 I tell you that that's a very hard thing to 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 maintain because oh. basically it means that we have to make sure that we're on top of it, but more importantly that we're giving the artists the tools and the knowledge to succeed. Yeah. One of the things that always occurred to me was is when you go to a platform and it, and you have to read sixteen blogs and watch fifty <laughs> videos and do two weeks of research. That's the whole time you could be making yeah. music with. What we viewed it was as is. You should be asking, you know, our knowledge, our team has so much in their brains. Yes. If you engage with us, we can help you get to that next level. That's our job. Otherwise, what is our job? So the, so the success rate is if you launch a pledge campaign and, you you know, we help you along that way, you have an 86% chance of 86%. hitting 86% beyond. Well, exactly. you just went yeah. up like 12% there. <laughs> You're a good mathematician, but not that good. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Eighty-six percent, and so, and really, you say the key to that is that you're helping these people as they come on board to try yeah. to raise money. That your yeah. knowledge and watching. How many campaigns have you had in four years? Thousands. I mean, we basically launch, put into production, and release two to three per day. Two to three per day over four years, huh? Yeah. Uh, wow. So, I mean, that's thousands that you've had. So you're able to take that knowledge, what works and doesn't work, trial and error, and help the people. And you understand the tools, how to use what's, what you have on the platform, because no matter how simple you make, sometimes it's hard to really understand. And, and that, God, 86%. I mean, yeah. uh, the big guys are lucky if they get 50%. Yeah, and the most important thing there is, is, that, is, is that we're not designed to be that big. We're designed to be work in our space and do it really, really well. And we also have a built-in fan base of music fans who don't want to just buy things. They want to experience them. Ah. So we built that as part of what we do. You know, everyone on this team, you know, from people that, that write projects, people that work on it, all understand the same thing, which is that we are the best way to get music to fans. Mm -hmm. Not, no better way is able to do that. Yeah. And so, and so, what I love is this fact that everyone on the team is is, is they're locked into that concept because they drive the quality as much as the fans do. Uh, another example of this was, you know, uh, one of the biggest bits of feedback we got from fans was, I want more releases. Wow. <laughs> Albums. So you started writing so, songs for these people yeah. or what? <laughs> yeah, and so, so, then, so then what we do is we go to the record label and say, hey, listen, put your releases out because the fans want them. <laughs> 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 well, another fascinating thing that you do is that if I'm investing in one of these bands here, you as a business, you know, Pledge Music will guarantee that I get what they promise. 
Yeah, exactly. And if the artist doesn't deliver it, we will refund you. Right. That's amazing. I mean, yeah. I haven't seen anybody do that. <laughs> so yeah, you no, really stand by what you say? What is this? That's un it is. <laughs> It's our job. That's our job. You know, you know, one of the things that got me was it's very hard to do a lot, a lot of the stuff that we make easier. It's, it's, it's hard to do. Yes. And so what we basically said was if you're a fan and you've pledged and that artist does not deliver the, the music and we'll, we'll try and get them to do it. But if it doesn't happen, it's our responsibility to refund you. That's our job. Otherwise, what is our job? Yeah. Other than yeah. to help. I mean, that, I mean, that's wonderful. I mean, but it, it's just so unusual <laughs> anymore yeah. to see, run into a company that actually does stand by what they say. <laughs> yeah. it's, one, it's one of those things where our, our, our main thing is, is that the artist and fan relationship is so important. Yeah. Because I'm an artist, so that's why I started this company as an artist, and so I know that anyone messing with my fans is dangerous. Yeah. And a lot of times, what managers and labels don't understand is is that fans, one hardcore fan, speaks to thousands. Yeah. And like they, fan nowadays, right? So you have to, you know, be very, very careful of that. So our thing is, if the fans not, have, if one fan isn't having a good experience and it costs us a hundred bucks, yeah. Well, you know what? It costs us a hundred bucks exactly. to make sure they're happy, and yeah. you know, it's really. Um, what kills me is, is is the entire industry suffers from this this scenario whereby it's like, well, you know, it's the artist problem. Yeah. You, you're the tool. <laughs> right. so They're well, using your gun. Work and, uh, <laughs> right. Guns kill people, not people. Yeah. <laughs> right. oh, whatever. But this is a wonderful service you're providing, and for people, and I wish it's in. Other venues besides music. I mean, if I had any kind of business, this is the kind of thing I'd I want to have to help uh, gather these brands and understand social media the way you guys have, and you have a guarantee at a 80% success rate. Man, nobody guarantees that anymore. Yeah. yeah. And so you go to pledgemusic.com, right? Yep. That's and sign up either as a, someone interested in music, or yep. if you produce music, then get on board and learn how to make money at it. Love it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Veggie. Thank you, mate. Now, isn't that a great site? I mean, to me, what's a great site is that they guarantee, they have a 100% guarantee that anything that one of these bands say that they're going to do, they stand by it and guarantee it. So even if the band or whatever it is, <laughs> they have a, a, a fundraiser and they don't perform or, or give you what they promise, they'll stand by it. Man, who stands by things 100% anymore? <laughs> Very few. And also, they have like over an 80% success rate. I mean, these big sites are lucky if they get 50% or so. You know, they have an 80% success rate. People say, hey, I need to raise 10 grand, and they actually make it. So 80% of the people make it. So that's right. It shows that they're actually helping people through the process to help make it. And that's what we need in life. <laughs> we need help. We're all struggling. One must try. <laughs> well, I want you to meet some superheroes, and it's not funny. It's really serious stuff. Uh, this is three people, Ed, Tanya, and Christian, their daughter. Now, Christian was just born a few months ago with a very rare disease that now is going to require surgeries for the next 20 years of her life. You know, when they're in the hospital with their child, I mean, they, they come home and not only they have this terrible thing that happened to their child that they have no idea how, that they get caught with a bill from the insurance company that says they're not going to pay for $90,000 with their child being in intensive care because they said, oh, this is, didn't require intensive care. I mean, this is the stuff we put up with in our system. And then now they're doing something about it. They don't have money to just pay all these bills. It's going to be millions of dollars. They have health insurance, but it's not cover everything. I mean, so they're going to have to come up with hundreds of thousands of dollars and they're just a young couple starting out their career. They don't have that kind of money. So they're going on the internet, fundraising sites, uh, giveforward.com. And so watch this video and see them explain the situation. They're heroes because they're doing something about the problem. They're not complaining. They're not, you know, trying to find a government program. <laughs> they're going out to the community to solve the problem. It's, it's like if my house burned down or whatever, and the people, we help each other. 
through life like that. And that's what communities are for. And that's why they're superheroes. They're not, some, what they're doing is not selfish. It's for this daughter who has 20 years of operations. And that's why they deserve a superhero cape. <laughs> I'm going to send them one. <laughs> and they don't know that yet. And that's why superheroes are people like that. They're not Superman. That's fantasy. Superheroes are people like, you know, the Tigers is their last name, and that just go out and do important work that is obvious, but is so hard to do. So watch this. Well, thank you for sharing yourselves with us, guys. I mean, it's Ed, Tanya, and Christian there in the lab, man. And I just don't know how you guys find the strength to share your story with everybody else after... Yeah, you know, her birth and what happened. So explain, you know, her birth to us and and what happened. I don't understand this disease she has. Uh, she's been diagnosed with Golden Har syndrome. Golden Har. Golden Har. Mm -hmm. And it's very rare. Uh, there's not really much known about it. Um, it causes a lot of facial deformities. Um, it can cause a lot of deformities throughout the body. Thankfully, with Kristen, we've been blessed in that her internal organs in her brain so far as we can tell are, are healthy. Um, but she has a lot of problems in the facial area and the skull. Right. So that's where a lot it's of horrible. <laughs> um, she is a I just, uh, oh gosh. <laughs> so it, it's, and the ears, you're not even sure if she hears well yet. She hears okay in one ear, but on this uh -huh. side here, uh -huh. she doesn't have an ear canal. So she has yes. no hearing whatsoever on that side. And then the one side of the mouth, there's no jaw. Is that it? It's um, shortened. It's really this entire side of her face is very, very small. Uh -huh. It's kind of um, kind of shrunken. Mm -hmm. So her her tongue and everything is kind of crowded in her mouth. It interferes with her breathing sometimes and her feeding. She needs a special bottle to eat with. Wow. Uh, so is she? Do you are you up all night making sure she sleeps, or how how does this? Work in the beginning, yeah. in the beginning, we were, yeah, we didn't sleep much be, at all. I, my kids are completely healthy, and I'd be in there looking to see, make sure they were breathing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, could she, imagine she, what this would be. Oh, pins and needles every second, not knowing it. And, well, how, how rare is this? I mean, I've never heard of it, but that doesn't mean anything. This It's, a, it's one in 5,000 births. Wow. Uh, it's even more rare for girls. Ah, so it's mostly guys. Huh? Yeah. We're strong. Huh? <laughs> 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 and uh, uh, is it, do they know the cause or it's just uh, a accident? Know. Nothing. There's no, there's no genetic test for it. They don't That's really it. know how or why it happens. Uh -huh. There's theories out there, but uh, it's extremely limited information. So you're just a young couple starting out your life. You have this, and you're going to have expenses that are going to explode for the next 20 years, it sounds like. Yeah, we're looking at dozens, literally dozens of corrective surgeries yeah. she has uh, with her jaw. And also she has like a, you know, like some kids have a cleft lip. Yeah. She has a cleft skull that runs from the, like, her forehead all the way down through her nose. Well, so they have to, kind of have to close this gap. Oh, so she skull. has a, a space where the skull yeah. isn't. So they have to close that gap. So they have to wait till she's older to have that operation. Is that it? Yeah, that operation will happen later on. The earlier operations will be to fix uh, her jaw, and she has a cleft in her soft palate, the soft tissue in her mouth. Yeah. That uh, they'll fix for language purposes, so that uh, she develops language normally in the next couple of years. Wow. Well, she'll be talking in a year, maybe, and so yeah, yeah. That, that surgery will probably happen. First. That'll probably be the first one that happens. Yeah. Probably be about six months from now. And how about her movement besides her facial movements? The rest of her body is, is will she be able to move? Oh yeah, everything else is. Uh, I mean, basically, she's a perfectly normal little girl. Yeah. With she just has some facial deformities. You know, there's no <laughs> mental deficit. All the other anomalies that come along with Golden Har, it's a symmetrical um, syndrome. So it can affect like just down one side of the body. It can right. affect just one kidney, one lung, one side of the heart, one side of the spine. Fortunately, all that stuff came back normal. Uh, so, wow. 
our main issue is the deformities in the face. To the point. And, and you have 20 years of operations maybe coming in. Wow. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. Ah, oh, and of course, our healthcare system, and no matter what happens next year with Obama, you care, is not going to cover all this for you. No, <laughs> no, no. We're literally looking at millions of dollars in medical no, expenses. I can't imagine. I mean, you, you're trying to raise $100,000, and, and you know it's going to be a lot more than that. Oh, yeah. We knew, but I mean, we had to start somewhere, and we oh, thought, you know, insurance will cover part of it, but even. Even five percent of two million is a hundred thousand. I was like, let's just start there. You know? <laughs> and, and and you know it's not going to stop. I mean, the one thing that seems guaranteed in healthcare that is going up, it's not going down. Uh, yeah. And then you have to really travel around, and probably a lot of this stuff won't even be covered, you know, because it's unusual treatments and things like this that may not be. We're still in the process of researching. There's a lot of foundations out there that, that help kids that have these types of ailments. Right. Well, good for you. They don't necessarily help with the medical expenses, but they help with the logistics, like the, the travel, the food, the, the hotel stays. Yeah, so, you have to get there and be somewhere for two weeks or something and, yeah. and stay with the child and, and everything. And nobody, I'm sure the health insurance is not... <laughs> <laughs> thinking no. about covering that. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. How, uh, I mean, how do you feel about the healthcare system now that you're stuck in the middle of it? I mean, does it make you more angry or, or that's the least of your problems you're just trying to get through? It's, it's exactly, I guess it's cliche for a reason because it's exactly what we had hoped wasn't the case, but it's exactly what people say. No, you know, we got we got a bill for ninety thousand dollars from her uh, intensive care stay. She was in intensive care for a month after she was born. We got a bill for ninety thousand dollars from the hospital, and uh, they said uh, that they're not going to cover it because they had decided they had decided that intensive care was not medically necessary. <laughs> She didn't need to be in the NICU. It wasn't medically necessary, so they weren't going to cover any of the cost. What was that last part? I was yelling. What? She, they, they said that the NICU wasn't medically necessary, so they weren't going to cover the cost. God, intensive care is not necessary. Well, why the hell they call it intensive care? <laughs> yeah, they make it sound like we said, can we put her in there? They have more comfortable beds or something. You know? <laughs> Should have taken her to the Hilton. Yeah. <laughs> well, that has since what? been resolved. But, I mean, it, it seems like the insurance company's knee-jerk reaction is to say no first. Right. And then, you know, yeah. once you fight back, they, they can see it a little bit. You fight back more, they can right. see it a little bit. And there are groups that I've run into. Contact me later if you want to help find some of these that help you understand the system, fight back. Because I think it's all about fighting back, a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Sure. And you're in a state capital, so you know uh, about agencies that control this kind of stuff that have more power than your lawyer or anybody else. Because We're learning. We never wanted to be uh, in this position to have to learn all this stuff. I mean, right. our normal <laughs> lives are already crazy enough. Now, you know, we have to become experts on this rare syndrome, and yeah. we're, e we're educating people and trying to get them to help us. Uh, we're trying to—they're trying to help us, but they don't understand the situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I hope this does: is realize that people in situations like that, that we all could help, even if there's a, not a formal system already set up to help you. In other words, like. <laughs> good health insurance or something <laughs> that the rest of us as a community, you know, can help. And that's what's so neat about you guys finding this out, you know, this give forward. How did you find it? How did you come across it? Actually, I had come, I had seen a few things on Kickstarter just from in the news, like talking about people raising money and then right. crowdfunding and that sort of thing. And I never really given it a second thought. And then all of a sudden we were thrust into this situation where, you know, we need to have a fundraiser. Right. You know, we, try to not go bankrupt from right. these medical bills that are coming. You probably will anyway, but <laughs> yes, it's unfortunate, the unfortunate truth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so I just started looking around it for different fundraiser websites and I came across give forward, yeah. which is, yeah. you know, more Kickstarter is more geared towards business. Yeah. This give is more, is more towards right. just, you know, philanthropy and giving. Yeah. And uh, they seemed legit and uh, it was easy to set up. Really? How long did it take you to set the whole thing up? Oh, maybe half a day. Really? And you're on, on go with it. And any yeah. do they charge you any money for that or anything? Uh, they charge you at the end. 
Oh, I see. So they're taking a piece of the cut. They take right? a, I think it's 7%. Right. But uh, people, when they donate, have the option to donate their money plus 7% so that oh, their full oh, donation gets oh. tough. Oh, that's cute. Right. And, uh, probably the biggest part of the setup was just making, we made that video real quick. Yeah. Oh, that's put a wonderful site. video. I don't know who helped you, the music and everything. That, that, that was real so touching. <laughs> that was all him. Really, I was, and, and Tanya, you, you're just wonderful, honest, and sincere. I mean, I, I, I've seen a lot of these things, and, and right, you don't need a big production. You, you just need you, and speaking from that heart of yours, and, and with Chris in there, and, and you could see here, you know, we, it's so easy to fall in love with all you guys, and oh, thank, thank, you. thank you for doing this and, and showing people that you can solve your problems yeah, by using the system. Yeah, it does work. <laughs> it's difficult, and it must be hard for you to get this energy up to, to fight this battle after you get hit in the gut like this with all these problems. Uh, uh, it's tough, but uh, I think what you're doing is being heroes for the rest of us. And you're showing what we really can do. Ah, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's so easy to cry with it. <laughs> you should be the one that cried. I mean, why not? <laughs> I have <laughs> cried out now. <laughs> You've done enough of this. <laughs> now it's my turn. But thank you for giving me the opportunity to cry. Now I know I've done something worthwhile today. <laughs> thank you. See, I mean, there are people like you and I suffering through a problem. We don't get an education at school on how to handle these difficult problems in life. So we have to have that resilience. So if you watch the video of them, maybe you could help. But most of all, you learn. Learn about problems that happen to a lot of us in life. And, and that could give you strength, maybe, to be a superhero in your own life or to help somebody else. You could go on that site and help somebody else a problem if you're not having a problem. That's what I'm really trying to do. And that's what they're doing for us too, is showing us how to be resilient and solve problems. One must try.